The stakes are high, and I'm here to see that the boy wins. You'll be the loser, whether you try to use that knife or your gun. Have Gun, Will Travel. Starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco, 1875, the Carlton Hotel, headquarters of a man called Paladin. Excuse, please, Mr. Paladin. Hmm? Yes, Miss Wong? I uh, do not wish to interrupt for you read newspaper, but if you move to sofa, Miss Wong can take breakfast dishy downstairs. Oh, that, no, that's all right. I think I'll have another cup of coffee. Oh, coffee. Just leave them here. Hey, boy, will be up to get them later. Oh, very well. Would you like Miss Wong to pour coffee? Oh, yes, thank you. Uh, Mr. Paladin, hmm? why are you dressed so nice early in the morning? Oh, well, I'm expecting a visitor, a Mr. J. Wellington Merriweather of Boston. Merriweather. He's coming up to my room this morning to discuss a business matter. Oh, I haven't met him, but men from Boston usually dress with great dignity, Miss Wong. Oh. Oh, so Mr. Paladin also dressed with great dignity. <laughs> uh, very good. Here's your coffee. Thank you. Miss Wong, go now. Oh, Miss Wong, would you tell Hayboy to bring some brandy with him when he comes up? Mr. Merriweather might like a glass of brandy. Oh, yes, sir. Is someone at your door? Yeah, I'll get it. Perhaps Mr. Merriweather? Oh, I didn't expect him this soon. Yes? How do you do? Are you Mr. Paladin? That's right. What can I do for you, lad? May I come in? Well, uh, right now I'm expecting someone. But uh, I thought I had an appointment. Uh, didn't you receive my message? Your message? I'm J. Wellington Merriweather. You? Oh. Oh, I see, I see. Yes, please, come in. Thank you. Oh. Uh, Miss Wong, this is J. Wellington Merriweather. How do you do? So happy. Uh, Miss Wong, I guess you'd better tell Hayboy to bring some... Um, uh, lemonade instead of brandy? Ah, uh, yes, uh, <laughs> lemonade. I told him, boy, he bring lemonade right away. Hola, amigo. You want to know about stereo phonographs? Listen to my last bullfight on ordinary stereo. Ole. But now, Colombia Stereo 1. <laughs> Ah, there is a corrida de toros, real lifelike, magnifica. There is such a big difference in stereo phonographs. With most, all you get is a couple of speakers shooting in different directions. But with Colombia, ah, hombre, you get fantastic stereo projection. What it does is to send circles of sound sweeping through every inch of a room. You are surrounded with live sound, live feeling, live passion. <laughs> Ole, ole! How they cheered me. Ask your Colombia phonograph dealer to demonstrate stereo one by Colombia. Prices start as low as $39.95 for portables, $129.95 for consoles. El picador! Who let that pull out? J. Wellington Merriweather sat stiffly on the edge of his chair, long-legged and earnest. The scared little boy showing through his poise and Beacon Street manners. He looked to be 13 or 14 years old. I tried to remember what it was like to be that young, but too many years got in my way. Uh, now, sir, shall we get down to business? Uh, yes, yes, of course. How did you happen to contact me, Mr. Merriweather? I learned about you quite by chance from the captain of the ship. I've just arrived around the Horn from Boston. Oh, how was the trip? Quite pleasant. After they found me and put me to work. Before that, I was getting rather hungry. Found you? Yes, sir. I was a stowaway. Oh. Are you in San Francisco alone? Of course. Would your parents know that you're here? My parents are dead. I live with my aunt and uncle in Boston. I ran away from home, Mr. Paladin. Ah, I see. Then you better tell me why you came here, boy. Precisely. Uh, perhaps this will explain. E excuse me, I, I have it pinned to my undershirt. Ah. Hmm. This, sir, is a map. It belonged to my father. 
and it came to me through the mail six months ago along with this note. You may read it if you like. Yeah. Yeah, I feel very well for your father talks so about you. Before he died, he asked me to the promise he once made you, I guess you was uh, Kelly. Who is this Kelly? I, I don't know, sir, but uh, there was a return address on the envelope. Lighthouse Saloon, Sacramento, California. Well, tell me, what do you think this map indicates? Buried treasure. Oh, I, I know it's childish of me to say that, sir. It's undoubtedly the location of a gold mining claim. But you see, that's what my father said when he left and came west. He said he was going to find a buried treasure. And he left you with your aunt and uncle? Yes. It was after my mother died. He didn't want to leave me. I understand that now. But he had to prove something. And that's what I must do. Prove what? That they're wrong. Aunt Amelia, Uncle Gus, all of them. All I ever heard from them was how my father ran out on his responsibilities, how he was worthless, a failure. Well, he wasn't a failure, and I'm going to find this treasure and prove it. Very important to you, isn't it? Oh, yes. You understand, don't you, Mr. Paladin? I think I'm beginning to understand. I shall need your help, and I wish to hire your services. Now, regarding financial arrangements... Oh, yes. Would you consider halvesies on the treasure? Halvesies? Uh, don't you think it would be wiser if you went back to Boston and wait until you're older to come out here to find your father's claim? Why, I'm almost 16 years old. Mr. Merriweather, if you don't have enough respect for me to tell me the truth, then you better find someone else to go with you. I guess you're right, sir. I, I'm sorry, I... I'm 14. Oh, that's more like it. But you should let your aunt and uncle know where, where you are. Perhaps, but I can never go back until I can prove to them that my father was just as good as they are, that he wasn't a failure. Well, if you're that determined, you'll need some protection. I'll go along with you, Mr. Merriweather. Oh, thank you, sir. By the way, the J stands for John. You may call me that if you like. All right, John. Half of a buried treasure that probably existed only in the hopes of a young boy. Wasn't very good business. But since he had come to me for help, I could not let him wander around the California wilderness alone. Two days later, we arrived in Sacramento and checked into a hotel. After an early dinner, I sent the boy up to his room to get some sleep. My next move would be to find Kelly, the man who had sent the map. I wanted more information about Lee Merriweather, John's father, before we started for the lost mining claim. I inquired at the hotel desk. Oh, uh, Mr. Paladin, is your room satisfactory? Oh, yes. Yes, it is. Uh, uh, could you tell me where I could find the Lighthouse Saloon? The Lighthouse? Yeah. Yes, that's three blocks north of here. You just take Montgomery Street. You can't miss it. Fine, thank you. Oh, uh, Mr. Paladin? Yes? Uh, did that gentleman find the boy? What gentleman? Well, uh, he was inquiring about the boy who checked in with you. He said he was a friend of his. I told him he could find Merriweather up in his room, but I, I didn't know you were in the dining room at the time. Did this gentleman go up to the boy's room? Well, I don't know, but he might have. Uh, uh, is there something wrong, Mr. Pell? I'm not sure. John? John? What's the matter, boy? What happened? Oh, my head. Somebody hit me on the back of the head. Here, let me help you up. Hey. Oh. You better lie down on the bed. Oh, I, I think I'm Indeed. quite all right, sir. I'll just sit here. Oh, what happened? I I came up to the room after I left you downstairs, and when I opened the door, I remember thinking it was peculiar. The, the light was on, and then someone hit me over the head. Did you see who it was? No, sir, I didn't. Mr. Paladin, look. My valise... My clothes all over the floor. Yeah. Somebody was looking for that map. Oh, but, but why would they hit me over the head? You, you'd think they'd ask me for it. They probably didn't want you to know who they were after they began rummaging through your suitcase. Oh. I'm awfully glad you had the map with you. What do you make of this, Mr. Paladin? I don't know, John. Maybe your friend Kelly will have the answer. Now go to bed, get some sleep, and you keep that door locked while I'm gone. <laughs> Winston tastes good like a cigarette should because... There's filter blend up front, up front ahead of the filter. 
And the flavor you get in a Winston cigarette comes from Filter Blend. Filter Blend means fine tobacco, Filter Blend up front. And the flavor you get in a Winston cigarette comes from Filter Blend. Filter Blend is a mighty good reason for you to smoke Winston. Because it means tobacco specially processed for filter smoking. A Winston secret. You get Winston's own pure white modern filter, plus the rich, delightful flavor of fine tobacco. There's filter blend up front, up front ahead of the filter. And the fun you get in a Winston cigarette comes from filter blend. And makes Winston taste good like a cigarette should. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. You know anybody here by the name of Kelly? Oh, you're new in town, ain't you? That's right. Yeah, Kelly's the boss. I'd like to see him. Is he here? Oh, yeah, yeah, right over there at the money table. Hey, in the pink dress. I mean, that's Kelly? <laughs> sure is. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Miss Kelly. Yes? My name is Paladin. May I talk to you? Sorry, I'm busy. Well, uh, let me ask you just one question. Did you know Lee Merriweather? Lee Merriweather? Guess my business can wait. Take over for me, Ben. We can sit at that table over there, Mr. Paladin. All right. <laughs> May I order you a drink? No, thank you. What about Lee Merriweather? Did you write to his son in Boston? What's that got to do with you? Well, I'm a friend of the boys. And since you sent him that map, I guess you are too. The boy and I are here to find that lost mining claim. The boy? Lee's son is here in Sacramento? Yes, he came to San Francisco as a stowaway. <laughs> Why, that little punk. Mr. Pelton, I'd, I'd like to see the boy. Well, certainly. How do you fit into this? They came to my hotel and asked me to help them find the mine. I agreed to do it. You want to tell me what you know about it? Did you know the boy's father? No, I... He was a man worth knowing. He didn't talk much except about his son. But I think I had him figured. He felt he had to strike it big to prove to the kid that his old man was a success. He prospected all over this country. I never knew a guy who could run into so much bad luck. Well, uh, Miss Kelly, what about the map? He stayed out there three weeks that time. And when he came back, he had a pouch full of samples of high-grade ore. He finally made it? Uh-uh. He never worked the claim. He staked it and hurried back into town to file. When he got here, it was, it was late. The assay office was closed. So he gave me the map of the location and the pouch to keep for him. And he went out to celebrate. I guess he had it coming. Yeah, word got around about him making a rich strike. Somebody must have realized he didn't have time to file and figured he had the map on him. He was waylaid, knifed, and searched. Left for dead. Did they find who did it? No, no. Lee somehow managed to get back here to my place. That's when he asked me to send the map back there to Boston to the kid. He said something about how he kept his promise. Mr. Paladin, that claim hasn't been filed, so it belongs to anyone who finds it. Yes, I understand that. Don't let anyone know you have that map. Well, that's the trouble, Miss Kelly. Someone already knows about it. They ransacked his room tonight while we were having dinner. You know who it was? No, no. I thought you might be able to help me answer that. Oh, it could be one of a dozen men. Whoever it was, he knows you're in town. You'll find out soon enough who it was. You're right, Miss Kelly. I'll find him. It was late when I reached the hotel. A single dim lamp burned in the lobby. And it took me a moment before I noticed John sitting in the corner talking to a strange man. Oh, Mr. Paladin. John, you're supposed to be in bed. I couldn't sleep. I came downstairs to see if I could get a glass of milk, and I met Mr. Morse here. Mr. Morse, Mr. Paladin. Hello, Paladin. Morse. He knew my father. Yeah, I knew Meriwether very well. 
I understand you're going out looking for that lost claim of his. If we are, it's a private venture. I'm afraid you're wrong. It belongs to whoever finds it first. A lot of people are interested in that claim. Are you, Mr. Morse? Well, of course I am. I'm a mining man, Mr. Paladin. Uh, you... <laughs> what are you doing to me? Would you be interested enough to knock that boy over the head for a map you think he might have? Let me go. I don't know what you're talking about. You... Now, if you were the one, Morse, I'll find out soon enough. Meanwhile, you stay away from that boy. Constipation is something people don't talk about much, but it can be a problem for anyone, even doctors. And when constipation occurs, it's interesting to see just what doctors consider important about a laxative they might use or recommend. Well, a majority of the doctors we heard from had this to say. A laxative should be effective, gentle, as close to natural acting as possible, and a medicine that can be used with complete confidence. Now, Exlax has been popular with many doctors and millions of people over the years because pleasant-tasting chocolated Exlax is effective. Overnight, it helps you toward your normal regularity. Exlax is gentle. Next morning, it gives you the closest thing to natural action. And that's why many doctors and millions of people use Exlax with complete confidence. Exlax, the laxative that helps you toward your normal regularity gently, overnight. Is Exlax in your medicine cabinet? It was important to have time on our side now that it was known we had the map. I got gear together and we started early the next morning. I told John about Kelly and what she had said about his father. He seemed pleased. The map was clearly marked and well drawn. And on the second day, we found the staked out claim. Well, there it is, John. No wonder no one could find it. Oh, but uh, uh, where? I Tunnel I... opening is all covered with that brush. Oh. But this has to be it. Here's the discovery monument. Monument, sir? Uh, that pile of rocks? Yeah, the location notice is buried there. The rocks oh. are set up to mark it. I see. May I see the tunnel? Yeah, sure. You help me clear this brush away. All right. Uh. Your father must have tunneled into this oh. hill just far enough to... To satisfy himself, there was gold. There. May we go in? Yeah, come on. Uh, bring that pick. Right. Watch for falling rock. There's no shoring. Wait a minute. Yeah, here's the ledge he worked. This is where he took out that ore sample he brought back. Hand me that pick. Oh, yeah. Let's see what we have here. <coughs> Pretty dark in here. John, would you get a couple of those candles we stored in our gear? Yes, sir. I'll be right back. <clears throat> wow. <clears throat> huh. That's strange. You can stop your work now, Paladin. What? I'm taking over this claim. Morse? Yeah. You didn't waste much time. I'm much obliged to you for showing me the way, since I couldn't find the map in the boy's room. Is that a knife you have in my back? That's right. A knife killed Merriweather. Yeah, I got quite an investment already in this claim. A poor investment. This claim is worthless. Yeah, I saw some of the ore that come out of here. I don't know, it was a shallow pocket. Merriweather was too excited over what he'd found to check it. I don't believe you. Huh? You're a mining man. See for yourself. Uh, it can't be. <laughs> <laughs> I can use a gun, too, Paladin. Mr. Paladin, are, are you all right? Yeah. When I came back with the candles, I, I heard you talking with Mr. Morse. I wanted to help you, but I was afraid to come in. No, I'm glad you stayed out of the way, John. I will have to go back to town and tell the authorities we found the man who murdered your father. You mean, you mean that was the man? Yeah. He's dead now. Was he the one who hit me in my room? Yes. Mr. Paladin, when I was outside, I, I heard you talking. That was clever what you told him about the claim being worthless. Wasn't being clever, John. That's the truth. Oh, no, sir. It was a long, silent ride back to Sacramento. 
I knew that Kelly could help me make the boy understand. And we found her in her office. And she met John for the first time. You look like your father, boy. Well, thank you. We thought you should know, Kelly. We found the claim. Uh, didn't pay out. Oh? Well, I, that happens. Yeah. It was a great disappointment to John here. Of course it was. Wait. I have something for you. I've been saving this for you, John. These are the ore samples your father dug out of that claim. It's good ore, rich. Too bad that's all there is. But it's yours. Your father kept his promise. Thank you, ma'am. Let me tell you something, John. That little bag full or a ton of this stuff doesn't measure the worth of a man. No, ma'am. Look, boy, you had a father you can be proud of. Believe me. And if they try to tell you any different back there in Boston, spit in their eye. Oh, yes, ma'am. Oh, me so far, I did. Hello, hey boy. I did not expect you back so soon. Well, the ship left on time. Was well, he, uh, many weather boys still sad about leaving? Oh. He managed a smile or two. He'll be glad to see his aunt and uncle when he gets back to Boston. Boy, that young misses the comforts of home, but he'd never admit it. Oh, he's uh, I could tell that he was homesick. Uh, perhaps uh, out of place here in California, huh? Maybe someday he'd come back to visit us. Perhaps. Oh, did you get the tickets for the opera tonight? Oh, yes, sir. When I mention your name, everything all right. Oh, and the, the uh, young lady? Oh, yeah, she's very anxious to go with you. Oh, really? But, uh, oh, uh, hey boy also thinks she's more interested in Mr. Paladin than seeing opera. <laughs> well, now, hey boy, uh, sounds like I may have a very congenial evening. Oh, yes, sir, very congenial. Oh, hey. Have Gun, Will Travel. Created by Herb Meadow and Sam Rolfe, is produced and directed in Hollywood by Frank Paris and stars John Daner as Paladin with Ben Wright as Hey Boy and Virginia Gregg as Miss Wong. Tonight's story was specially written for Have Gun, Will Travel by Ann Dowd. Featured in the cast were Virginia Christine, Barney Phillips, Joe Cranston, and Joel Davis. This is Hugh Douglas inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents Have Gun, Will Travel. <laughs>